Good morning, everyone. Good uh, morning to everyone who's watching or worshiping with us now. Um, meron ba tayong mga nasa Pilipinas? Chat lang kayo dyan. Pwede kayong ano, pwede rin kayong mag-unmute to speak out if you like. <laughs> um, welcome to All for Christ Church International. Um, today, we grieve the passing of the UAE Sheikh. Sheikh Khalifa, and we thank God for this country, the UAE, for the many opportunities uh, this country has uh, given us OFWs, and we praise God for that. Um, we also praise God for uh, the elections held in the Philippines last May 9, um, and even the month-long voting held in many embassies all around the world, which allowed us, every one of us, to express our voice diba, in choosing um, the leaders of our country. So we, we thank God for that. Um, so again, I am um, Sister Jean, and I am tasked to deliver God's word today. Um, so, samahan niyo po ako to pray for God's grace and God's anointing um, para um, maintindihan natin at talaga pong um, samahan tayo ng Panginoon ngayong umaga. Uh, let's pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, uh, we lift up your name, Lord God. We ask for forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness, Lord God, for my sins um, in thought in words and in action. And I pray, Lord God, also that um, you forgive uh, the sins of my brethren, Lord God, and we claim your forgiveness and your redemption. I pray, Lord God, that as we repent of our sins, Lord God, truly we will be convicted to uh, move forward, Lord God, and uh, change our lifestyle for your glory. Lord, uh, this morning, we pray, Lord God, for your anointing and for your grace. Pray, Lord God, that you increase, Lord God, while I decrease. And I pray, Lord God, that you hide me behind your cross. I pray, Lord God, that you um, speak to us, Lord God, and allow your Holy Spirit, Lord God, to convict us, Lord God, so that um, whatever word, Lord God, we will hear from you will be applied in our lives, Lord God, and uh, glorify your name. Um, Lord God, we lift up your name. We give you all the praises and all the adoration and we pray this in the mighty name of your son jesus christ and we say we love you father we love you jesus we love you holy spirit in jesus name we pray amen and amen so you know brothers and sisters um the past months the, the past weeks especially a uh, few days into this preaching the country has witnessed I would say the most emotionally charged news feed on social media. I don't know if everyone agrees with me, but this is my um, this is my observation. Kahit ako den, I would admit that um, kahit hindi ako active on social media, very emotionally invested invested ako. And there would be nights I would cry, pero hindi ako iyak ngayon. <laughs> Yon. Um, and it's true, right? Um, because people are emotionally charged. If um, we come across views, opinions, posts, um, anything online or even offline, views that are um, views that disagree, views that disagree with our with our opinions or views, we get defensive. Um, brothers and sisters, minsan ayo naman natin, but. Um, Parang and automatic, without our control, our hearts become defensive. And because of this defensiveness, um, we cannot help but attack or scorn or judge other people. And after that, um, we can't help as well to um, judge back. And the judgments will be hurled back to one another back and forth. Amen. Ito po yung makita mo sa karamihan ng mga posts online, sa mga comments section especially. There will be um, bullies. There will be people um, just, you know, judging for the sake of um, bashing. And this breaks our hearts, brothers and sisters. Sasabihin sa atin, when somebody tells something 
um, against somebody else's view. Ang phrase, ang famous quote na lagi natin makita, you don't have the right to tell me that I'm wrong. Tama ba? Kasi iisipin natin, ikaw ba? Malinis ka ba? May kasalanan ka rin naman ha? What about what you said? Hindi ba masama yan? So it's just right that I defend myself. It's just right that I judge you back because hindi ka naman malinis. Diba? Yun yung lagi nating nakikita. Yun yung lagi nating nakik- napapakinggan. And it's really heartbreaking, mga kapatid. Um, today, the task is to look into the Bible. What does God have to say about judgment? Ayan, di ba? As we exercise our freedom of speech and choice, meron talagang mga nag-disagree sa atin. So ang tanong, what does God have to say about judgment? What does God have to say about our words, our actions, even our thoughts? Sabi ko nga sa sarili ko, ito na ata yung pinakamahirap na topic na na-assign sa akin sa preaching. Bakit? Kasi every word that will come out of my ma- of my mouth is actually judgment and that same judgment will be used to measure my life as well so ang tanong sa atin ngayon we as christians when we are faced with such challenging questions such as do i engage in conversations do i engage in judgments or is it better to keep silent If I strongly express my opinion, we, will I be judged as someone who passes judgment on somebody? Or am I rightfully standing up for what is true? Laging merong dalawang thought. And that, that idea, that concept actually limited me, hindered me from actually um, starting, starting to create, starting to write down this preaching. Kasi... Sabi ko, ano, ano ba yung uh, magiging judgment sa bawat salita ko? Will it be a judgment of me being judgmental? Or am I just standing up for what is true? So this is what we will find out in the scriptures. Another question is, how do I show love in the midst of sin? Sa mga nakikita natin online and even offline, Another question is, how do I even recognize sin? How do I judge if this certain thing is sin, if it's a gray area, for example, in the Bible? And if it is sin, how do I show love in, the, in that midst? There are so many questions, and I believe God has an answer for each of them. So today, we will try our best to look into scripture and not listen to my opinion or just my own words, but really read scripture and see what is, it, what is in there about judgment. Is it true, brothers and sisters, that when we are faced with complex issues, relational, financial, or even political views, we respond either two ways. First is some of us, we respond with love, but without discernment, without careful discernment. Naawa tayo, we are compassionate, and we put aside discernment because we feel na ang dapat natin gawin is to respond only with love. And some of us would respond in a way uh, na may careful discernment. There is careful discernment and judgment, but to the point na nawawala na yung compassion and love. Alam niyo po yung pakiramdam kapag po nasabihan tayo ng rebuke. Pero ang sakit-sakit, kasi yung pagkakasabi sa atin, parang ang baba-baba natin at ang taas-taas nila. Um, ano nga ba ang tama? Pwede ba tayong mag-call out ng kasalanan? Pwede ba nating sabihin sa kapatid natin na, kapatid, may mali ka dito? And paano natin gagawin yun? And what draws the line between judging rightly and judging wrongfully? At meron bang tinatawag na wrong judgment or right judgment? Kasi ang, ang bato sa atin palagi, judge not. 
if we cannot, we, if we are not allowed to judge, paano tayo mabubuhay? We judge the very little things. What to buy, what time to go, who to be friends with. There are so many things to be judged. But if the Bible is misquoted to say that we ought not to judge, how do we actually live our lives? So the scripture will give us some light to this. The preaching for today is entitled, Love and Discernment. And I think they should go hand in hand. And um, the Apostle Paul actually um, prayed for this. Um, hindi ko lang po ito hope, but it is actually the hope of Apostle Paul. And that will be our, our anchor verse. It will come from, nakatawa kasi it will come from the book of Philippians. So feeling ko parang magkalapit sa Philippines. So isipin natin, this is a letter of Paul to the Philippines. Okay? So this is the prayer of Paul. It is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And may I repeat that? It is my prayer that your love abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. So today's preaching is entitled, Love and Discernment. Um, I want to mention that in the King James Version, um, this prayer uh, uses the word judgment instead of discernment. So we could say na um, they mean the same thing, judgment and discernment, okay? Because discernment is judging well, right? So, love and judgment, love and discernment, how do we practice both? Kayo mga kapatid, how do you practice love and discernment or love and judgment at the same time? If judgment is called for in this prayer, may sa pang tanong, when does judgment become sin? Kung ang love and judgment dapat together, Pwede kayang maging kasalanan ang judgment? Let us explore scriptures together. Marami tayong babasahing scripture para makita natin iba't ibang entries. Entries? <laughs> entries parang ano lang. <laughs> Contest. Um, I believe that uh, scripture should uh, interpret scripture kasi. So if for example, di ba kapag meron tayong pinabasang isang passage, yes, it is important that we find or we understand the context uh, kung kailan sinabi yung passage na yon, kanino sinabi at sino ang nagsabi and what is the prevailing context of, the, of, of that uh, time. So other than that, we also believe that the Bible is um, coherent different authors diba? but um, inspired by god and they should not contradict each other god does not contradict himself so we will also look at other uh, passages in the bible and see ano ba yung sabi ni god about judgment and we will start with the most famous most famous passage about um judgment and i will also start now with um, a category ng wrong type of judgment. Pag-aaralan natin, what are the wrong types of judgment? And I use the acronym HUSH. Diba? HUSH. Diba ang HUSH ano yan? Uh, pag matutulog, dapat di ka maingay. Eh, pag may natutulog, dapat di ka maingay. So HUSH. HUSH meaning silent. Okay? So ang tanong, when should we HUSH or silence our judgments? Okay? First, Letter H. May hula ba kayo sa letter H? <laughs> Hush daw, sabi na mga kasama ko dito. H. Hate? Pwede. Pero, gagamitin kong word for letter H ngayon ay 
hypocritical judgment. Okay? Sino po dito ang nasabihan na na hypocrite? Di ba masakit? Especially sa mga halimbawa may families tayo na um, hindi pa kristyano tapos they know that we are Christians. For example, uh, alam nila na very active tayo sa church pero ang ugali natin pala sa family natin or sa bahay natin is different. They would call us hypocrite. And ang sakit-sakit no na masabihan ka na hypocrite, di ba? Or even um, sa, sa politics, di ba? If people judge us and they think na hypocrite tayo, ang sakit din masabihan ng hypocrite. What is hypocrite? What is a hypocrite? A hypocrite is somebody who judges another for a sin that he also um, commits but is in denial of. Okay? Or not really in denial of, maybe he is just not aware. Okay? But that person does the sin. Titignan natin yung most famous, most quoted verse on judgment. Luke 6, 37 to 42. Judge not, and you will not be judged. Condemn not, and you will not be condemned. And you forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Napapakanta na ba kayo? Will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. He also told them a parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? A disciple is not above his teacher, but everyone, when he is fully trained, will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is, that is in your own eye? Speck, maliit na dust. Log, timbre, malaki. How possible it is it? You can see the speck in your brother's eye but a very big log in your eye, you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye. When you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye, you hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. Okay? And the same command is seen in Matthew chapter 7. Judge not, that you not be judged. For with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give dogs what is holy and do not throw your pearls before pigs lest they trample them underfoot and turn to attack you. Is it true, brothers and sisters, that we are very tolerant of ourselves when it comes to sin but we are so interested to call out somebody else's sin. Right? We are very tolerant of ourselves. God is challenging us now. First, take the log out of your own eye. Meaning, let us judge ourselves first. Tayo muna. Self-check muna tayo. And when we have found out that we have this very big log in, in, front of, in our eye, Let's repent of it. Totoo naman yun. There will be times that um, we are not aware that we are already sinning. But don't, um, don't feel sad or don't worry because as born-again Christians, the Holy Spirit is with us, ready to convict us when we sin. So this is our way. When the Holy Spirit convicts us, I hope that your choice, your volition, your will is to respond with repentance. And that is my hope also for myself. And once we have repented, then we can help our brother and to remove that speck out of his eye. We are not, um, we are not uh, uh, 
forbidden. We are not forbidden to help our brothers and sisters to remove that speck. But we have to make sure that our eyes are clear first. Amen. Now let's go to letter U. Meron po ba kayong hula kung ano yung letter U sa ating hush? What type of judgment should we silence? What type of judgment shall we hush? Letter U, untrue judgment. Alam niyo po yung pag na-judge ka po tapos alam mong mali naman, tapos ang daming naniwala, di ba? Ang sakit-sakit. O kaya naranasan niyo na po ba yung, yung tanungin or questionin yung motibo mo sa paggawa ng isang bagay? Tumulong ka ng bukal sa puso mo pero ang sabi nila may interest ka, may hidden agenda ka. Masakit, di ba? Maraming ganyan. Maraming um, untrue judgment. And you will see that. Uh, ito ah, Proverbs 19.5 A false witness will not go unpunished and he who breathes out lies will not escape. Ibig sabihin na ayaw ni Lord ng mga false witnesses. Ayaw niya nagsisinungaling tayo and there will be times na hindi natin sasadyan. May mga times na akala natin totoo yung judgment natin. That's why we have to, to uh, really think about, about it. We have to um, make sure that whatever judgment that will come out of our mouths, hindi siya mali. Hindi siya paratang na mali. Hindi siya akusasyon na walang uh, foundation, walang basis. Okay? Another thing I want to um, mention here, hindi ko siya nalagay sa slide, no? But um, you will see that, that uh, in the Bible that the Lord looks um, at the heart of the man of man of men um, and we look at the appearance only god can see the motives of men and we are not um we are not capable we are not able to judge anybody's motives unless they admit it by words diba so i hope that this will be a lesson for us not to pr presume to do presumptions um ah Kaya yan gumagawa ng mabuti kasi nagpapasikat. Kaya yan uh, tumutulong kasi sip-sip. O kaya naman, kaya yan um, namimigay ng tu nagbibigay ng tulong kasi tatakbo yan next election. Okay? So that is um, untrue judgment. Yung titingnan natin yung motibo ng tao kahit iba naman yung sinasabi niya. Another verse na alam na alam natin from our last last preaching is Exodus 20 verse 16. It's one of the Ten Commandments. And here, we know na talagang mali siya kasi commandment siya ni God. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Okay? So I hope, brothers and sisters, hindi tayo magbibigay ng untrue judgment sa ating mga uh, kapatiran. Letter S, we should silence our superficial judgments. Bakit? And paano nangyayari itong superficial judgments? Sa itsura, diba? sa appearance ng tao, um, nangyayari yung mga na left out kasi hindi siya cool. Halimbawa, hindi siya cool kasama, hindi siya cool tignan, or meron siyang amoy, for example, or hindi siya nag ng sarili. And because of that, we judge na hindi siya worthy of our attention and time and our friendship. Diba? Um, Proverbs 18.13 18, says, If one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. So also, part of superficial judgment is when we give judgment ahead of time. Yung hindi pa natin naririnig yung tao, yung paliwanag niya, nagbibigay na tayo kaagad ng judgment. So, agree ba tayo doon, mga kapatid? Masakit kapag nabigyan tayo ng superficial judgment. Yung hindi mo pa napaliwanag yung action mo, meron ka na agad narinig. Right? At mas masakit kapag narinig mo yun sa mga kapatiran, di ba? John 7.24, si Jesus mismo ang nagsabi, Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. And from here, we can see that there is truly a right type of judgment and a wrong type of judgment. Okay? So 1 Samuel 16:7 naman, sabi naman ni Lord kay Samuel, "Do not look 
on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him for the Lord sees not as a man sees man looks on the outward appearance but the Lord looks on the heart okay so marami ano yan hindi lang siya sa mga negative things eh sometimes we judge somebody as if he is um leveled with God sobrang bilib na bilib tayo sa tao and we give that person so much responsibility and privilege because mukha siyang okay mukha siyang kagalang-galang at maayos but we have to do our part we have to really um look into it talaga bang karapat dapat itong tao na to pangalawang letter h harsh judgment harsh ang harsh mo naman best oh di ba ang harsh mo naman okay <laughs> Harsh. Sabi sa Titus 3, 2. To speak evil of no one. To avoid quarreling. To be gentle and to show perfect courtesy toward all people. To speak evil of no one. Meron na ba tayo na pagsabihan ng masama? Nakipag-away na ba tayo? Has there been times when we judged somebody, especially our brethren, and we were very harsh? Nasaktan siya, napaiyak natin siya. We are commanded to show courtesy to all people. And when we pass judgment on other people, it's not only the content or the thought or the words. It's also the way we deliver it. Um, sometimes, um, a sentence or statement will uh, look so innocent, but if it is um, stated or delivered with um, a face na iba ang tono, iba ang itsura, nagsisimula na dyan ang away. Siguro alam yan ng mga uh, mag boyfriend, girlfriend, tingin ko uso din yan sa mag-asawa, yung ano lang naman, sasabi, di ba may mga ano yan, may mga kwento yan, for example, sa mga tulfo na, na nagtanong lang naman ako kung anong oras ang dinner, nagalit na siya. Yung mga ganun. Kasi minsan, um, judgment is not only through words, but also with expre expression and tone of voice. Proverbs 15.1 A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Okay? So when we judge, let us ask God to help us to deliver it with gentleness. Okay? So yun po ang ating four types of wrong judgment. Hypocritical judgment, untrue judgment, superficial judgment, and harsh judgment. Okay. Meron pala akong pahabol sa Ephesians 4.29. Okay. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. Ito yung tinatawag nating edification. Yung words ba natin, yung judgment ba natin, will it edify, will it build up our brethren's faith? Or will it tear it down? Okay? Hush. Pause. And be silent. Think before you speak. Think before you post, share, or comment. And when you do, are you doing it with love and discernment? Now, we will look at how do we actually love when discerning? How do we love when judging? Last week, Sister Sheila Anud um, helped us walk through loving our enemies. So somehow, na touch natin yung love part. Now, how about judging? How do we express love even while we are passing judgment? Una, judge in righteousness. Sabi ni God, sabi ni Jesus Christ kanina sa John 7.24, diba? Do not judge by appearances, but judge with right judgment. So, as Christians, as um, followers of Jesus Christ, 
we desire, we, we like, we like uh, for God to teach us. Gusto natin mag-glorify siya. Ano po ba yung right judgment, God? Ano po ba yung right judgment, Jesus? Because I want to learn how to do it. I want to praise and glorify you through this. Sabi sa Leviticus 19.16, you shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. So it's just another verse that tells us na meron talagang type, uh, right type of judgment, right? Um, hindi siya mali altogether. Hindi siya bawal altogether. You can judge, but in a righteous manner. Okay? How? Second thing is to test everything. Ano yung meron sa test everything? When you test everything, you judge everything, right? You 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 judge first before you before you pass judgment through words. Iniisip mo muna ng pagkaigi-igi. Tinetest mo muna yung spirit. Tinetest mo muna yung mga bagay-bagay. Sabi sa First Thessalonians 5:20 to 22, do not despise prophecies, but Test everything. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. When we hear somebody talk about God's word, when we hear somebody preach, we are, we are commanded to test everything. We are commanded like to be like the Bereans, to check in the word of God. Tama ba yung naririnig ko? And even now, brothers and sisters, I, I ask all of you, if meron po kayong marinig na mali sa mga sasabihin ko, please come to me and tell me and I want to correct that. And I hope na ganun din tayong lahat that um, we will be, we will have this um, healthy, healthy, um, healthy environment for judgments. Tama po. That we are able to come up with the truth, makita natin yung katotohanan without, um, without offending other people. Another way where we exercise right judgment is when we teach God's commands. Bakit po? Kasi sometimes uh, we are only we are forced to teach only of God's promises. Kasi po unang una sometimes it is uncomfortable and sometimes we are also afraid of judgment from our brethren. But God is. Um, God is encouraging us, is actually commanding us to teach His commands. So, if we teach the commands, it will come off as if we are judging. Kasi pag sinabi ko po sa inyo ngayon, right, judge, judge right, righteously, it's as if I am judging you na hindi ka kasi nag-judge righteously. But it is God's command. I have to say it because it has to be taught. Teach God's commands and not only His promises, diba? Um, turo yan sa atin sa ACCI. We ought to look for commands. Sabi sa Acts 20, verse 27, I did not, for, sabi to ni Luke, for I did not shrink from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Walang tinitira, walang siniset aside. Minsan po, totoo lang po, uh, mahirap po talaga yung magturo kasi may mga bagay na minsan ayaw mong sabihin kasi ayaw mong makasakit or ayaw mong maka-offend. Pero yun po ang, uh, yun po ang mandato sa mga tumatayo to teach the whole counsel of God. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 to 4 says, Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. When we reprove, when we rebuke, when we exhort, di ba po we judge? But we judge in a righteous way with God's righteousness ayon sa kanyang salita. For the time, uh, with complete patience and teaching, for the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. 
Totoo po yan, brothers and sisters. Minsan po may mga makikinig sa atin na gusto lang marinig yung gusto nilang marinig. But we are we are commanded to judge uh, righteously. We have to rebuke, reprove, and exhort with complete patience and teaching kahit na po binabalik sa atin yung, um, yung judgment. Another way po na tinuturuan tayo ni God to judge rightfully or righteously is when we are commanded to gently confront uh, erring brothers, erring brothers or sisters in Christ. Um, naranasan niyo po ba ito? Naranasan niyo po bang mag-rebuke? Naranasan niyo po bang kayo po ay ma-rebuke ng kapatiran sa church? Sabi po si Ephesians 4.15, basahin po natin, Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him who is the head into Christ. We are encouraged, we are commanded to speak the truth in love. So much so that if in front of you a sister or a brother in Christ is unrepentant of a sin and is even arrogant or proud of it and you are not you are not rebuking him. You are not calling him out gently in private. You are not actually loving your sister or brother in Christ. Okay po. Galatians 6.1 says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgressions, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you to be tempted. So, uh, commanded po tayo to um, uh, help our brothers and sisters who are in sin na ma-restore po sila but in a spirit of gentleness. Kasi po kapag hindi in a spirit of gentleness, maari po tayong pasukin ng pride. Maari po tayong pasukin ng self-righteousness. And yung, yung supposedly po na pagtulong natin sa ating kapwa, hindi na po magiging effective kasi tayo na po mismo um, na-tempt na po ng enemy. So, uh, I pray and encourage everyone to be open to rebuke. Um, ang rebuke po, minsan masakit, pero tandaan po natin na tayo-tayo lang din po kasi yung magtutulungan dito sa ating family. Kung hindi po natin nakikita yung kasalanan po natin, salamat sa Diyos at meron tayong um, kapatid na uh, concerned po sa atin, na ayaw po tayong mapariwara, na mapalayo sa Diyos, and siya po ay uh, tutulungan tayong makabalik. But again, a word of reminder sa atin naman po magre-rebuke that we not do hush, which is hypocritical judgment, untrue judgment, superficial judgment, and harsh judgment. So when we rebuke, let's do otherwise. Okay? In Matthew 18, verses 15 to 17, si Jesus Christ po, tinuruan po tayo, how do we actually deal with sin in church? How do we deal with a brother or sister who is um, entangled in sin? Sabi niya dito, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Pag-usapan po ninyong dalawa yan, kayong dalawa lang po. Ngayon po, if hindi po siya makikinig sa inyo and he, that person is unrepentant, uh, still proud of what he is doing and does not admit na mali yun, then, um, tsaka po tayo pupunta sa next step. Okay? Pero kung nakinig siya sa inyo, if he listens to you, you have gained your brother. Okay? Sisingitan ko lang po ng isang passage na hindi ko po nasulat dito from James. Sabi sa James 5, 19 to 20. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. So, nakakatawa naman po na um, kapag po tayo ay naiakay pabalik sa Panginoon, di po ba? And, sabi po sa Psalm 141 verse 5, the godly um, sabi po doon, let a righteous man strike me. It is kindness. Kapag daw po pala ni-rebuke ako, 
ng isang righteous na tao, okay lang sa akin yun kasi that's a form of kindness. Let him rebuke me. It is oil for my head. Let my head not refuse it. Yet my prayer is continually against their evil deeds. Diba po? The godly will appreciate an honest rebuke. Okay? Done in a right manner. Okay? Um, next step sa dealing with a brother in sin, if he does not listen ng kayong dalawa lang, Take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, unrepentant pa din, proud pa din sa ginagawang kasalanan, hindi tinatabla ng rebuke, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen, even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile, and tax collector. Um, unang beses lang po ba natin ito narinig, mga kapatid? If you read it or listen to it, grabe po, no? Very, parang harsh. Um, can we actually do that in church? To, um, yung, kakat mo yung relationship mo with that person? Is it even effective? Um, I guess, dun, dun papasok talaga yung prayer. Prayer for discernment. Kailan applicable itong passage na ito? We have to pray and be really careful kasi we don't want to um, incorrectly judge the person. But there will be times, extreme times, when a person is really arrogant and he um, wrongfully believes na he is saved, that he is safe because he is in the church and he is abusing the grace of God it is better for him to uh, be cut off so that in the hopes that when he is cut off, he will realize his sins and siya na mismo yung babalik. And in this, um, in this line, in this view, we are to practice church discipline. Okay? Um, merong isang... Um, passage sa 1 Corinthians kung saan merong isang sexually immoral um, part of the church. Um, and that person uh, is committing a sexual immoral act which even the pagans, yung mga outside the church, something na hindi nila ina-approve. So sobrang lala nung sexual immorality na ito. Um, for a man has his father's wife. So yung uh, siguro yung lalaki um, is having sexual relations with um, the stepmother. Okay? Ang sabi ni Paul dito, and you are arrogant. That person committing that sin, and even though the church knows about it, that person is still arrogant. And you are arrogant. Even the church, ought you not rather to mourn? Dapat daw mag-mourn ang church. And not be arrogant about it. Siguro, they are arrogant kasi feeling nila they are loving kasi hindi nila kinokorek yung tao. And they are accepting that person despite the sin. But Paul is telling the Corinthians, you ought to mourn. Um, let him who has done this be removed from among you. Siguro at this stage, no, kasi alam na ng buong church and they are still arrogant and not mourning. They have gone through the stages. Nakausap na ng privately, nakapagdala na ng isa or dalawang brother, and still, hindi siya um, nagawa ng paraan. I wrote to you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people, not at all meaning the sexually immoral of this world. Ibig sabihin, yung mga outsiders, Hindi sinasabi ni Paul na wag nyo silang kausapin because they are in the world. How can we expect them to follow the spiritual things of God when they their spirit is not yet alive? Tama po ba? Not at all meaning the sexually immoral of this world or the greedy and swindlers or idolaters. Since then, you would need to go out of the world. But now I am writing to you not to associate with anyone who bears the name of brother, brother, if he is guilty of sexual immorality or greed, or is an idolater, reviler, drunkard, or swindler, not even to eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? 
Is it not those inside the church whom you are to judge? God judges those people outside. Purge the evil person from among you. So from this passage, we have learned so many things um, that we are not to tolerate sin, unrepentant sin in our midst. Bakit po? Because that could influence other brothers and sisters. And as a family of God, we are to protect the purity of each one. Kasi di ba ang process natin, after we have been saved, we are to be sanctified. And we are working out our salvation. So kung halimbawa, ang influences natin around us, um, very tolerant of sin, and accepting of sin, it is not good for their faith. It's not building their faith up. So, ang sabi ni Paul, we have to cut off our relationship with that person up until the time that he wakes up to his senses and be reconciled back to God. And again, when we do it, we do it not in a hush manner. Not hypocritical, not untrue, not superficial, and not harsh. And sabi din dito, God judges those who are outside. So we are not to judge people not of the same faith. We cannot expect them to follow the spiritual things of God. And so what do we do with, with, with them when we see sin in their midst? We do differently. I will tell you now. We judge the church, but we witness to the world. Jesus Christ Diba? Did not come to condemn the world, but to save it. So, how do we deal with outsiders? We love them. We witness to them the gospel of Jesus Christ. We reach out to them, but we don't judge them. But with our brethren, we are much stricter. We are to judge one another in a right manner. Why? Because... We are protecting the purity of ourselves. We are aiming for sanctification until the day of Christ. And I hope that it will be done healthily in, in our midst as a family. As closing, uh, gusto kong i-quote si uh, Marshall Sigal. Actually, I read his article and um, that inspired me to um, to focus on love and discernment. Sabi niya, practicing, really practicing love and discernment is not merely about winning an argument or being on the right side of history or uh, but about being right before God for eternity. Ha, practicing, really practicing love and discernment is not merely about winning an argument or being on the right side of history but about being right before God for eternity. Ang challenge natin sa bawat isa, praise be to God, may our love abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that we may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. May we silence our wrong judgments and start practicing love and righteous judgment within the church. Test everything, teach everything, and gently rebuke sinning brethren to win them back to Christ or for Christ. Ito po ang ating magiging final up. Um, Please, final takeaway, judge ourselves first, una muna ang sarili, then judge the church and witness to the world. Memory verse natin for today, praise the Lord. It is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment. Philippians 1 verse 9. Maraming maraming salamat po, brothers and sisters. I hope that you, we all... Uh, heard from God, and I pray that the Holy Spirit, Spirit would truly convict us to apply it in our lives. And I pray that um, lahat po tayo, uh, we will be open to rebuke, and at the same time, when, when we rebuke, do it in a right manner. Maraming maraming salamat po. Praise God. Praise, praise, pray all praises be to God.
Thank you, uh, Sister Jean. Praise the Lord. Uh, thanking God for that uh, uh, wonderful message today. At tayo po ay ako personally na remind about our uh, yung ating pong task and purpose. No? Ano yung ina niya? Judge ourselves, judge the church, and witness uh, ano yung? outside. No? Ano ba yung last na yan? witness to the world. So very important po talaga yung ating uh, ating uh, uh, standing no when it comes to witnessing to the to, to the world no very important po. Minsan naka, nakakalimutan natin that people are looking at us. People are <laughs> tawag dito, looking at what we're doing, what we are saying, what we are posting. At naalala ko palagi yung uh, sinasabi sa amin before na Sa atin before that we can bring a person to, uh, we can usher a person or we can bring a person to heaven or we can bring that person to hell. Kasi pag nadi-disappoint, for example, yung ibang mga tao sa mga sinasabi, ginagawa natin, di ba? Di, mahirap silang papaniwalain doon sa ating mga sinishare. Thank you, uh, Sister Jean, for that message today. And uh, I pray that all of that message will be in our hearts and we will pray for that uh, now let's all let's all pray father god we just want to thank you lord for the message that you have given us uh, through sister jean father god and we believe lord this is timely and uh, i don't know lord but really this is uh, a message that we should we should re receive uh, today and i pray lord that uh, this will not just be a message, but I pray, Lord, that this will be planted in our hearts and it will grow and bear fruit in our lives. Lord, I pray, Father God, that we'll all be uh, a witness uh, to the world, Father God, most especially, because we believe, Lord, there, there's so many souls still that needs to be uh, brought uh, to, the, to the feet of Jesus. Maraming maraming salamat, Lord, for the life of Sister Jean, who have used to, you have used today, Lord, to bless us. Continue to pray, Lord, Father God, that you will use her mightily as your mouthpiece in sharing your love to all of us and to all the people that will be part of our lives, Father God. We give you glory, honor, praise, and adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now, we're going to, again, I think we don't have any first timer so we will now break bread as a family if you have your elements with you right now in wherever you're sitting wherever you are uh, tuning in with us please uh, uh, we'll have it now and i would like to pray for that as well father god thank you lord for these elements lord that we have here right now this bread and cup that as a family, we're going to share and break and remember what Jesus Christ has done for us. Lord, bless this uh, bread and cup. Lord, that this will always be a constant reminder of the death, the suffering and death of our Lord Jesus for the forgiveness of our sin. Thank you, Father, uh, for this. And we pray, Lord, Father God, that there will be again a reminder for each and every one of us in Jesus' name. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you on the night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's all partake of the bread. In the same way, after supper, took the cup, lifted up, and said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you drink this cup, eat this bread, and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That's all. Partake of the cup. Lord, maraming salamat, Panginoon, for again allowing us to be reminded. 
of your love and mercy for all of us. Thank you again. Uh, um, uh, we have some changes in what we're doing today because of uh, as what past Pastor Philip have shared earlier. We have a three-day morning here in the UAE. But next week, Next week, balik po tayo sa ating uh, regular worship service uh, sa Kalidia Mall. Uh, uh, same time. We'll see you again next week. Uh, continue to pray and we'll continue to uh, uh, pray po yung ating mga darating na worship service, especially po sa Kalidia Mall. And continue to uh, uh, share uh, yung ating po mga, I think this is recorded so we'll, we'll try to post it as well. And uh, let's continue to invite uh, people into our, not really church, but let's invite people to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. because siya po ang ating, uh, the reason why we are all here. And let's continue to be um, uh, uh, witnesses dun po sa nakapaligid sa atin. Let's go in prayer. Father God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for today. Maraming maraming salamat, Lord, for waking us all up and allowed us to, to hear your message. A very, very timely message for each and every one of us. Uh, we pray, Lord, Father God, that all through the week, and ito po ay mag, uh, mag ring sa amin palagi, that we'll always be reminded of who we are and what we have to do, Father God, as your children. And Lord, Father God, as another uh, week will be coming for all of us, I pray, Lord, that you will continuously strengthen each and every one of us, Father God. Lift up your hands if you're, uh, y y I just want to release you now in blessing. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I release now my brethren, Lord, with power, authority, Lord, encouragement for us, Lord, to continue to share Jesus Christ to other people. And Lord, I pray, Lord, Father God, even sa aming mga workplaces, Lord, that you will continue to use us uh, as a shining example, Lord, as your uh, witness, Father God, so that they will come to know Jesus Christ as, you, as, uh, as their Lord and Savior as well, Father God. And I pray, Lord, Father God, that you will provide knowledge and wisdom, blessings of favors, Father God, to all of us as we have uh, another week, Panginoon, uh, kami po ay uh, magtatrabaho, Father God. We deal, Lord, with what the world, Panginoon, uh, ma, 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 dadatnan po namin, what the world will give us, Father God, makakayanan po namin ito dahil po kasama namin kayo, Panginoon. Kasama namin po kayo. Kayo ang aming kalakasan. Maraming maraming salamat po, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for this time. I know uh, and and we continue to pray, Lord, even for our next week's worship service, Lord, that we can go back to our normal uh, setup, Father God. Kay po ang uh, pinataas namin, Panginoon, at kay po ang inaasa namin sa lahat lahat. Maraming maraming salamat po, Lord God. We give you back all the glory, honor, praises, and adoration in Jesus' name. And Lord, we continue also, Lord, to be with the UAE, Father God in uh in uh, this time of uh, uh times of uh, sadness for the nation of uae because of the loss of uh, the president uh, sheikh kalipa uh, alayan father god and uh, we continue to pray lord strength uh, for the family father god maraming maraming salamat po panginoon we give you glory we give you honor we give you praise in jesus name we pray Amen. 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 God bless everyone and see you next week.